Welcome back to this episode of Starting a Business Simplified. Today I have guest Janine Kelbach. She is a registered nurse certified OB. Janine is a wife, mom of two boys, and a Great Dane, educator and author of the book Entrepreneurs. 30 plus nurses turn into business owners and share their secrets to success. She's been a freelance health content writer since 2013 and is the CEO of Write RN. She hosts the Savvy Scribe podcast and owns SavvyNurseWriter.com. Her team of RN writers help healthcare companies with their content and social needs. As you can see, Janine has accomplished so many amazing things since leaving her career as an RN full-time. We have a candid conversation about how she became an entrepreneur, what were some of the struggles and the celebrations that she's had along the way. So I hope you enjoy this episode and are inspired by the success that she has had. Welcome to Starting a Business Simplified, Navigating the Shift, a podcast for those of you looking to transition from a medical career to starting an online business. I will be sharing how to get started, success stories, and more. If you are looking to make the move from medicine to online, but don't know where to start, this is the podcast for you. I'm Susie Rains, your host, and I look forward to helping you simplify starting a business. Hi, Janine. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, and thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I know, me too. And for the listeners out there, I invited Janine to this podcast because she has an amazing success story. And I know that when we start out, things can be overwhelming and crazy and we don't know what to expect. So I love that you're here, Janine, to share your story of how you transitioned out of your work as an RN and into your own thriving and beautiful business. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I think too, it's, it is overwhelming at first. And especially for me going into it, I honestly was just looking for a side hustle of something I could do on the side of nursing. And I think that's what a lot of us do. We go into like business going, I just want to supplement my income. I just want to supplement my income. And then it's like, okay, then, it, you know, eventually it grows, not quickly, but eventually it grows. And then you have to kind of make that decision of, well, do I give more to my side hustle, which is now becoming more of my job or less and go back to bedside. And, you know, that was my big struggle probably at the end, but Truly, at first, it is that just navigating the sea of unknown and overwhelm. And, you know, I think a big part of that is having a community and having a coach and having a course and having a roadmap or something to go by. And in my experience, I didn't even have that. So it was a lot of like a lot of Googling. I'll say that there was a <laughs> lot of Googling going on and a lot of reading and a lot of podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I love somebody mentioned before the YouTube university. I was like, that's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. However, even when I started this venture back in, I actually started freelance writing in 2013. And back then there wasn't a lot out there. I mean, the internet wasn't new anymore. However, the freelance world was in a sense, like people did freelancing, but nobody really taught it. So especially nurses or other professionals in a sense. It was more maybe writers who have a background of writing, who worked for a publishing agency or something like that, who ended up then going freelance. So they knew the world, but especially in nursing, I was clueless, totally clueless. I didn't even know what a freelancer was, let alone anything else. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go back to the beginning. We're going to go back in history. And for our yeah. listeners, if you could just give us a good summary of how you, what, how this all came to be. What got you yeah, okay. in, on the entrepreneur, freelancer, all of that. Yeah, so I guess going way back, right? I started in nursing back in the early 2000s and I was a labor and delivery nurse for a while, long time, only in labor and delivery. I, I bounced around a couple different hospitals, a tertiary center. And then like the one I say I was born and raised at, literally born there. And then I started as a candy striper and volunteered there and then got wow. a job there. And so born and raised, right? Had my kids there. Like that's how that <laughs> hospital was. It was home. And the nurses to me were second mothers, right? They were 
you know, I was always the kid and, you know, towards the end of my career, I was obviously the older one and whatever, but you know, that's kind of how it started. I was, I worked in that hospital, but I always wanted to work in a tertiary center, which is about 25 minutes from my house, downtown Cleveland, Ohio. So I ended up working down there for quite a while and I loved it. And I loved the intensity. I loved the high, you know, adrenaline rush environment. And, but I was always, there was always like something in me that I felt like I was unfulfilled. So what did I do? Like all of us, I went back to school. Everybody goes back. Oh, you got to go back to school. You're a nurse. You got to go back to school. So that's what's drilled in us. That's what I did. When I first came out of school, I didn't go and get my bachelor's right away because I had a brand new newborn. And I was like, I just need to pause for a second, get my year of experience. Then I'll go back. Well, that turned into, you know, after my second son was born, then I did the online BSN program, was going to go get my MSN. But I really didn't feel passionate enough to go spend all that money to go be a midwife or educator, or I just did not feel the passion in me. The passion in me was more something I still didn't know. I didn't know I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know what that looked like. So what did I do? I went up in management. So now I'm doing management. I'm precepting. I'm doing like all the things. I get certified. I, you know, was in the OR a lot in labor and delivery. And I was always just doing so many different things. I love my patients. I love the bedside. And it wasn't that. Like, I just still was like, I don't know what it is. So always growing up, I always had multiple jobs. Again, it's to come down to I was bored. I don't know. Or was it I was born to be an entrepreneur? I don't know. So I ended up taking this home care position in Cleveland for pregnant women. And I would go see these women in the inner city of Cleveland. And I had my computer and I really only needed to contact the center if I needed something. And I didn't really need anything because I knew how to take care of my patients. I was always one of those people. I go to work. I know what work needs done. No one needs to tell me what to do. I usually end up doing more than is expected. And what I realized with that job is that there was flexibility and that I could place my patients where I wanted them. I could schedule out my time. I loved just going to get a cup of coffee and charting and having that world to myself. I love being home for my babies at two, you know, and being able to be a mom instead of working overnight and over and over. I worked, I was the one, I was the one working 12 hour shifts. I was the one picking up extra. I was in management, like I said, so I would take the job home with me way too much. I was de- definitely felt like that guilt of if we didn't have enough staff, like to have to stay, I would stay overnight at the hospital. I would do all the things. So after that home care job, I was always just like, what is there? There's gotta be something else I can do on the side that can get me more money, but that I'm home more. So that's how I stumbled upon freelance writing. Wasn't because I was like wanting to work online, but I always had this knack of good online skills. My dad was like in IT when I was a kid. So we were like hip and cool to the internet before like everyone else was. And I was just like one of those kids that just loved being on the computer. So needless to say, what ended up happening was I was Googling, what can a nurse do on the side? you know, blah, blah, blah. And writing came up, but not as a nurse. It came up as like what moms can do on the side. So I was like, well, I'm a mom. I could do this. <laughs> it was like in this Facebook group, it was like, how do I get started? Didn't even tell anyone I was a nurse. And then I was just, people were like, you know, you could do this, you could do that, you could do this. And I'm like, well, I really enjoy health. And that's what I enjoy. And then it came out that I was a nurse. And they're like, what are you doing here? You need to like, go build yourself up. Like you're a nurse, you have so much to offer than us. And, you know, as moms that are just doing this to stay at home and whatever, you have this great background in health. So I took their advice. I ended up working with healthline.com before they were really big and started reviewing, medically reviewing articles, writing articles. And that's kind of where it then, you know, and honestly, you know, my, maybe my husband will listen to this, but he knows this now. I didn't tell him, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that it was real. I didn't believe that I could actually make money doing it. I was literally just experimenting when my kid was taking a nap or when I would take the other one to school and had a couple hours. I was just trying to dabble in the world to see, is this possible? So what I told myself was, if I can make as much money as one 12-hour shift, I will be happy. I could cut back and I could be with my kids more. And people thought I was crazy. They're like, there's doing what? Writing online? Like, you're, there's no way you're going to make money doing that, Janine. 
okay, well, I'm going to try. Well, we're going to see what happens. And <laughs> here we are now. Like I now have helped hundreds, hundreds of maybe thousands of nurses by now start their own freelance writing businesses. And it was not overnight. And I, you know, navigated that path of like creating a roadmap and a course and coaching and group coaching and a community where nurses can actually do this on the side. But again, it's still not an overnight success. I've paved the way a little better, but it does take some time to get your business up and running and be professional about it and make it more than just a hobby because that's how we make money is making it more than just a hobby. So that's my story in, in you know, a five minute nutshell there. I love that. So many things. I was taking notes because there's so many things that I think the listeners can identify with. No one needed to tell you what to do in your nursing job. Like you yes. take charge. I know that's my personality. That's the type of person I am. Every job I've ever been in was once I knew how to do what they needed me to do, then they could just leave me alone. And I just did. Yeah. And I think that has a, that's a big piece to being an entrepreneur because you have to take charge. You can't wait for somebody to tell you, do this or this. You have to figure it out. And I love that you took the time to do the experiments, the research, the you weren't finding something that was already created. You're like, I'll just create it myself. And that's what entrepreneurs do. That's what we do as new business owners. We have an idea that we don't really know how to get there, but we have a yeah. drive to make it happen. Yeah, I have and this so like, as, thing about myself that if there's something I can't figure out, I'll figure it out. Like I have this drive to go, what, there has to be an answer. There's too many smart people in this world to not have an answer to this question or this problem or this idea. Like somebody's done it somewhere. So it's reinventing the wheel. For example, like people are like, Janine, this is an amazing idea you have of nurse writers inside your agency. So, so for those listening, an agency is what I own now. So I have two parts of my mm -hmm. business, WriteRN, which is my agency, and then Savvy Nurse Writer, which is the course for nurses to become writers. Well, the agency is where we have nurse writers and agencies are a normal conversation, but mine's just a little more specialized because it's only nurses who write. It's not a new idea. It's just an idea that I was comfortable with because I'm a nurse. So I always say, go with what you're comfortable with, do what you like, and the money will follow. The ideas aren't new. It's just using your own idea to make something new. And so the idea of an a content agency online isn't new. Anything you've ever read online, anything a website has done has had some sort of agency. Usually they're bigger, help them out with that. So that's what we do in our agency. We help other healthcare content, you know, websites or just healthcare websites in general, because it can go from healthcare companies that have services or healthcare companies that have products. Everybody needs something written. And a lot of times, business owners or people who, who own the company, they don't want to write. They don't have the time. They don't have the skill. And that's where we come in and help. So again, it's not a new idea. It's just putting my take on it. So again, it's like you do have to think about it a little bit, but I have this part of me that's like, well, I'm going to figure it out because it's already there. I just got to add my own twist on it. And I think that's a lot of times of what a lot of people end up doing to, that become successful entrepreneurs is they put their own twist on something because a lot of ideas honestly have already been taken. Sorry to push yeah. the bubble, guys, but it really has. A lot of ideas have already been taken. I love that you shared that and putting and putting words to that because I do business planning. Oh my goodness, business plans have been around for how long? My idea though came from me to simplify it and to make it a certain way to reach a certain audience in a certain way from my perspective. Like you said, it's really taking what you know and you're comfortable and you love doing, you have a passion for and making it your own and talking yeah. to your people. It's your audience, your right. clients, your people. And there's billions of us in the world. And I love it. You and I have something similar. My dad, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, so way before the internet. But before computers, so really, my dad, we had one of the first computers that came out. He was like a computer nerd. And so I've like I've gone through the whole evolvement of dial-up connections to high speed to everything. And it's that curiosity 
Like what makes me unique that I can bring to the table, that I can bring to other people that's going to be helpful and beneficial. I've been going through this with my podcast is speaking my voice and saying, this is who I am and this is what I do. And this is how I can help. And this is my experience. And knowing that every single one of us has that in us. All these billions Mm -hmm. of people that are in the world that we can now reach through the internet, (laughs) which I love. I travel around the world all the time through Zoom. It is. It's amazing. It's It's mind-blowing, actually, because I think back and I go, man, I can remember when the phone was attached to the wall. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And even like... You know, they talk about AI right now and how crazy it is and people are like against it and whatever. And it, but we were the same way with Google. We were the same way with the internet. And look at the opportunities it has brought to so many of us. It's just us trying to like adapt to it. And I mean, my business wouldn't exist back in the 90s, back in the early 2000s. There's no way it would exist. And that's why I even tell my kids, like, I know, like, have an idea of what you want to do with your life. But, you know, I'm in my 40s and I'm finally figuring out what I want to do. Because the world has changed, it's going to open up opportunities. So be on that cutting edge. Be curious and ask questions because even as an entrepreneur, like in coming, talking to your audience here, they are going to figure that out with new opportunities that are arising. So go with those trends. Don't be afraid of it because if you limit yourself, you're going to stay back in the times and That's not good either because, you know, I think of my grandmother who's in her 90s and she has a Facebook account. She has a cell phone. She drives like all these things. And she says, I have to keep up because the world's not going to wait for me. And if I don't, I don't want to be left behind. Like we have an aunt who's like, when the email came out, I'm not emailing. She still doesn't. And she still waits for everyone to send letters and nobody's doing that. So she was left behind now. Like, and now she's not getting caught up. She's in her 80s. She, she's not doing that. But, you know, I think it's really important, especially us now that are on the internet, that even you just listening to a podcast right now is more advanced than probably you ever thought you would be. We didn't even know podcasts would exist in the 90s, but like, you know, here they are. And they're so valuable to your knowledge. Actually, I'll tell you, when I first started my freelance writing business, that's how I learned everything. Because I had to drive to work every day. So in the morning, I would subscribe to different podcasts and just listen and go, okay, what can I implement? And try not to get overwhelmed and just take the little bit of knowledge I needed for that time and just go with it and be curious, ask questions and get your questions answered and you'll forge your way. It's hard, but it's not in the same way. Like if you just keep getting answers to your questions, you'll, you'll forge the way through. You'll get answers. Yeah. And I love that people are helpful. Yeah. And I love at the beginning where you mentioned community, like surround yourself. Yes. You were in a Facebook group. So I encourage the listeners all the time, whatever it is that you're doing, surround yourself with people that are like-minded. There's no competition in the world because there's plenty to go around. Like there is so much abundance and so much need for what you have, no matter what it is. And I think we get overwhelmed and we're like, but my idea is not new and this and that and nobody, guess what? You know what? It's your idea. There's only one Janine. There's only one Susie in the world. No one else out there is like me. So it's okay if there's a hundred other people that are doing what I do. They're not doing it the same yes. way I do. That's true. Yeah. I try to help people that too. Even when, you know, one of the modules in my current course, which I know you probably preached your people is like niching down and People are afraid to niche down to that specific target audience because they're afraid they're not going to have any clients. And I was afraid of that myself. Like, but you think about it, how many freelance writing courses are out there? Uh, Tons. There's millions out there, but none of them are speaking to nurses. And if they are, they're not speaking to them how I am. So that's the other thing too, is you have to put your own unique taste on it. And I think, too, we think about that and we go, well, I don't know how I'm different than anyone else. But when you start to write, when you start to put yourself out there, when you're not scared to do it, your unique voice will come out and your unique twist on things will come out. For example, like my podcast, I laugh because everyone's like, I can't like we're on like episode 230 or something. And everybody's like, how do you do that? I'm like, honestly, it's so raw and uncut. Like, this is me. This is me. I'm not going to look like that typical influencer on Instagram that's all polished. And no, 
I got two kids, got a dog. We travel a lot. Like this is my husband's mowing the grass right now. Like this is what we do. Like this is we're real. And people at the bedside, like I want people to think Janine was at the bedside too. She's my fellow night shift worker with me. I don't want people to think I'm better than anyone else either. So I'm not going to polish myself up. I'm not going to constantly edit to make all the ums and ahs and whatever go away. Like, no, this is how I talk. You had a conversation with me. I want people to listen to my podcast and go, okay, this is Janine. Just like I was talking to her on the phone, this is who I'm getting. And, you know, I think people need to, we can't be perfect all the time or ever, you know, we just yeah. have to put ourselves out there and it's okay. That's yeah. why TikTok's doing so well. Yeah, we are perfectly who we are. Yeah. Just as we are. Yeah. And just that, as that's we are. all that matters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's such a big thing with starting a business because it's putting yourself out there. And I know for me, yeah. I'm going through just peeling back layers. It's funny. You say your podcast 200 and something. And I'm like, I think I'm on 60. <laughs> but you know, it's you'll like, get there. guess what? Like I'm like, quick. Okay, li- <laughs> just so you know, listeners, you got to start somewhere. Like all of us start. You somewhere. do. We all started number with- one. And you know, before, like my business has evolved. Like I was actually had a co-host with me named Carol in the beginning. And now she's working, she's doing something else in Kansas. Now she lives in Kansas, but we're still really good friends. And we were talking the other day and she goes, Janine, I listened to our first episode. And that's, we scripted things. We were like, we were taking out the ums and the ahs and the, and it was exhausting. I'm like, I can't do this every week. I can barely, like my podcast is the only thing ever in my entire life I've done consistently for 230 weeks like I've never done anything and it's not because I record every week it's because I batch it and I do it all in one day and then you know do it again so that's the other thing too is you have to I will say like when you're starting your own business time management is key like you have to figure that out and I think that holds a lot of people back because you think you have no time but you're thinking I want something else on the side of my nursing job but you have to be able to towards that time to be able to have the time on the side of your nursing job. So and it's kind of and know it's hard what you explain. should be. Yeah. <clears throat> know what you should be doing yes. in that time. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind maybe sharing a little bit about you're still doing your nursing, but you're doing the side on the side. So when you were starting your freelancing, how did you manage that? How did you know, okay, when I have this little bit of time that I have, what you should be doing? Oh my gosh, or like what? my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> it's because it, I love like hacks, like time management hacks, productivity hacks, whatever it is. And I will tell you, so I think back to like nap time was always like the number one time I would get stuff done. But beyond that, I will say I always called it my hour of power because I literally had one hour to get as much thing, much done as I possibly could. And that was when my son went to preschool. And it was like, you know, preschool was like a, hour and a half, two hours, but by the time you drop them off. And what, so I had to pre-plan this. I had to go, okay, if I drive back to my house, I'm not going to have as much time as if I went to the library down the street. So I would plan that out. Okay. So in this time frame, I need to send off the X number of pitches, or I'm only going to pitch for the next hour to clients. So what does that mean? That means I'm not looking for clients that should have been done another time or research their emails or LinkedIn or whatever. That time is only carved out for sending the pitches. So maybe the day before was researching all the clients. So you have to just boil it down to just certain things to get done in one hour of time. The other method I like to use is something called the Pomodoro method, where it's like 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 minutes on, five minutes off. And you do those cycles until you don't, you can't do it anymore. So I did that yesterday, for example. I had, we were out of town like all weekend. So I knew it was a huge catch up day and I knew there was like tons I needed to get done. And I'm revamping my entire course right now. So yesterday I was like, I need to, I'm like creating like gamifying it a little bit. So like little badges I'm making. And all stuff. So I told myself, okay, from this time, this 25 minute block, I'm doing this. And then that's over five minute break. You can't do anything. You can't do anything on your computer or your phone or whatever. So I get up, I get some water. I change the laundry or something. Oh, five minutes is up. Okay. So back to the computer, go for another 25 minutes. And now I'm working on something else. So I did that for, I could usually do like three, maybe four of those before I need like a long break. 
So on the long break, I'll do like a nice walk around the neighborhood or, you know, that's when I'll, you know, go do whatever. So those are a great way to kind of batch out that time. Another thing is to just pre-plan, pre-plan your week. Look at on Fridays, look at what you have that next coming week. When I was full-time at the bedside, I knew which days I was going to work. So those evenings of those days were shot. Like I'm not going to come home and write an article after a 12 hour shift. Ain't going to happen. My brain's dead. So I would get up early, like an hour earlier than my shift and get that hour of power in before I go into work. So I did a lot of that during when I was full-time and then the days off, obviously you still have to do all the things with the kids in your house or whatever. So sometimes it would be like, okay, all morning I'm cleaning the house, getting groceries, going to the park, whatever we're doing. But then this two hours in the afternoon is when I'm doing some writing stuff. So Really, it is just kind of going in, like you said, Susie, just going in and knowing exactly what you got to get done before you got to actually do it. And then honing in on it and getting it done. And sometimes I'm one of those people that can have a to-do list that lasts miles and miles long. So really, if you do have like one of those lists that you're just brain dumping everything in your entire life, like, you know, you got to get a Father's Day gift for your dad. And like, then you got your kid's basketball game and you got, you know, this and that. And you just put it all on one sheet and then break it apart to what's important. And when you are going to fit those in your week, that helps a lot too, because then you go into that day going, okay, this is what I need to get done. And these are already pre-planned engagements that I can't move. You know, we got the basketball game, we got a tutoring session and we have a meeting with a client. Like those aren't going to move off the calendar. So what can you do to change it? around? And what in your life is like a non-negotiable, right? Like a lot of us are, you know, we want to work out, we want to cook a good dinner. And so put that in there, like make sure you can't move that and then plan your stuff around it. And I guarantee if you do something like that, you will find time in your week. And a lot of us think there isn't any, but I want you to look at your Netflix watching. I want you to see what you're doing in the morning. Are you just sitting on your phone and scrolling? Because there's definitely a lot more things that can be done. So there's all these like little breaks in life we get that we think we don't have time, but truly you do. You just have to, you just have to look at your schedule a little bit. Yeah. I And that's something too, that you mentioned with the time timing thing. And I always recommend this too, is setting a timer or I will it, say I have a call that's coming up and I took a break and I come and I sit down like, you know, I have 15 minutes till my next call. I'll find something that I'm like, could I do this in 15 minutes? It's amazing how much you can get done, even in a five minute block. And yes. I'll be like, yes, ooh, 15 minutes. And I'm working on this one content for my course. Let me see how much I can get done. And I start working and I have a timer and I look down and I'm like, whoa, I just finished an entire thing that I didn't realize I could get yes. done in 10 minutes. And I still have five minutes left to get ready for my call. No problem. And we don't realize. I think we do that a lot. We do yeah. that a lot when we don't want to do something. When there's something that you're like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. You keep thinking it's taking longer than it actually is going to take. You just keep yep. pushing it. I don't want to but, do it. And then you actually do it and you're like, oh, that didn't take long. I know. I interviewed a guest a while back. Her episode's coming up this month. And she mentioned this and I was like, oh, I never thought of that. When you think about something and you're like, oh, I need to do, I need to do the laundry. You know, I really need to do that. You're doing it every time you think about it. Yes. <laughs> She's like, so really you did laundry do like it. five times. <laughs> yes. Like if you would just get up and go and like grab the laundry, then you're yes. doing it once. But I'm I always like, said about, is, like, yeah. you know, being at the bedside, a lot of nurses complain. They either complain about being at work or having to go do something on a patient or whatever. And I'm like, the longer you sit here and complain about it, it could have already been done. Like just exactly. get it done. Yeah. Get just, it done. If we just... <laughs> forward motion, if we just move into those uncomfortable or those things that we just don't want, just doing it. Because when you think about it, the more you think about it, the more you're doing it without and doing sometimes it. doing it first, right? Like mm -hmm. sometimes in the morning, especially for me, is like the most clarity time I have. So I also have the most emotional energy, mental energy. So I'll put those hard tasks first because I don't want to do them. They're tedious, they're boring, whatever put them first on the list. And then I feel so accomplished even before the midday, you know, because they're done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for all of just talking about your story or what you're doing and how you're doing things now. Would you mind sharing with the audience exactly your agency side, but also the nurse savvy side 
and what those things yeah. are if they are interested in working with you or being a part of what you're doing. Yeah. So you can go to SavvyNurseWriter.com. That's the website for nurses who want to become freelance writers. Over there, you'll see the membership course. We call it a course membership because it's like a year-long membership, but you have access to the course. And there's a lot that goes within there. Plus, you'll find the podcast over there. The Savvy Scribe podcast is our podcast. And then over there also, you can sign up to, it's totally free. You can sign up to be a nurse writer on, and make your own nurse writer profile. And adding, you know, even if you don't have any samples or anything yet, but you're really interested in doing this, you can put yourself into our database. And we may have opportunities where we are searching for writers. Say you have a background in pediatrics, we'll use our database to search you. And we may email you to say we have a client in our agency, Write RN, who's interested in some pediatric nurses to write some content. So we also have a job board over on SavvyNurseWriter.com where you could see opportunities to write your first pieces or whatever if you're really interested in getting started. And then on the WriteRN.net side, that's for, you know, clients who are interested in getting writers for their healthcare businesses. That's awesome. I love that. And that I feel like that's just such a great place for those of you listening that are wanting to get out of clinical care or move away from, or even if you're not working in clinical care, but you have nursing in your background and you want to do something with writing. Like you just have that spark yeah. of like, I'm a writer. I love writing. And you just don't have a, an outlet to do that. So thank you I think you it's so a good much. win-win. Like yeah. it's a good win-win for clients who want nurse writers and nurses. A lot of times nurses don't want to go get clients. They just want to write. They just want to make a little extra income. And that's what we provide with our job board and whatnot too. Just to help people out. Why not? Yeah. I love that. And for those of you listening, Janine, again, she just repurposed something that was already out there in her yeah. own way. So yeah. if you're out there and you're thinking like, what could I do? Pick something that you love and you can make something out of it for sure. And if, absolutely. And either one of us, reach out to either one of us. If it's around the writing realm and you want to do something with writing, reach out to Janine. And if you're just not sure and you got to open-ended, I'm available to reach out to as well for those ideas that you're just like, I don't know, but I just want to brainstorm. Let's brainstorm because that's where it starts with the idea. Love it. Thank you so much, Janine, for being here. Thank you so much. And for my listeners out there, as always, keep it simple. Thanks for listening to this episode of Starting a Business Simplified, Navigating the Shift. If you enjoyed this episode, then hit the subscribe or follow button on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for you. So be sure to reach out and let me know what you thought about this episode. If you're not sure how to get started with your business, download a copy of the Starting a Business Simplified Guide. Click on the link in the show notes for your copy. 